ought to be being set up very, very early in his thinking. The God-centered worldview and the man-centered worldview, and here is your origins dichotomy, creation or evolution. Or in other words, you're either on the creationist side or the evolutionist side. There's only two positions. Pick one or the other. According to Dr. Morris, there is no proven scientific evidence that the Earth is old. There is no evidence, whatever, that evolution of one kind of organism into a more complex organism has ever occurred. Divine revelation, that is, the Bible, from the creator of the world states that he did it all in six days several thousand years ago. The Bible contains all the basic principles upon which, and here's your operative word, true science is built. In fact, Dr. Morris goes so far as to say, the Bible is a book of science. In other words, if you want to find out how the world was made, you have to go to the Bible. Continuing, there is a personal creator behind the origin of all things, and we urgently need to know him and to order our lives according to his will as revealed in the Bible. Again, there's your connection to ethics. In other words, if you can figure out how the world was made, we can figure out how, therefore, we are to live. And if there's any debate with regards to where Henry Morris is coming from, this next little quotation says it all. Satan himself is the originator of the concept of evolution. Well, let's go back to our dichotomy diagram in the handout. What Henry Morris presents for us is a popular understanding, and you'll notice my quotation marks, of religion. Also a popular understanding of the meaning of the word creation. This position embraces God, and similar to Julian Huxley, you'll see origins is connected to ethics. Morris presents biblical ethics. In other words, God decides right and wrong, and we find this in the scriptures. But instead of using popular terminology, let's use professional definitions. Henry Morris's position is more accurately defined as fundamentalism. In other words, Christian fundamentalism. And it also is a conflation, or in other words, a blending, a collapsing of two distinct ideas. In this case, of Christianity with a certain understanding of the first chapter of the Bible, the creation account. And what this results is a popular understanding that the, quote, Christian position is one that has to embrace creation in six literal days. Well, I have a question. Are we trapped in this origins dichotomy where we have to view science the way Julian Huxley sees it? or religion the way Henry Morris understands it? Or are there credible positions in between? For example, what do you make of an individual like myself? First and foremost, I am a thoroughly committed and unapologetic evangelical theologian trained to the PhD level. I'm a born-again Christian. I believe the Bible is the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God. I read it every morning in my morning devotions. I believe in miracles. I've even experienced them. I'm a Pentecostal Christian. I believe in intelligent design. And of course, this term needs to be defined today. I define it in the light of the Bible. Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. So when I look at beauty, complexity, and functionality in nature, it strikes me that there's some sort of creative mind behind nature. And secondly, I am, and I think you probably suspected this was coming, a thoroughly committed and unapologetic evolutionary biologist, 
also trained to the PhD level in some of the very best evolutionary evidence. There is the evolution of teeth and jaws. I find the evidence for biological evolution to be simply overwhelming, as many before me have said. I have yet to see evidence that falsifies, or in other words, negates the theory of evolution, and it's the easiest theory to falsify. Find me one human tooth down in the Cambrian about 500 million years ago. I'll identify it for you, and we will turn all of science upside down. But I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for that to happen. And finally, I recognize the explanatory power of evolutionary theory. As many have said before me, biology makes sense in the light of evolution. So, what do you make of an individual like myself? I am both a Christian and also an evolutionist. Well, let me suggest to you that I'm not all that unusual, and let me give you some examples from both the scientific community and the religious community of individuals who are in the process of moving beyond the dichotomy. Let's first look at the scientific community. In 1997, Larson and Witham published a paper in the journal Nature, which is one of the best scientific journals in the world. And it was a study of the religious beliefs of scientists. And I think the title says it all. Scientists are still keeping the faith. And by the way, the full citation of this paper is on the back of your handout. This study surveyed American scientists who were listed in the who's who of American science. And here are two of the questions they were asked. Whether they believed in a God in intellectual and emotional communication with humankind. And the study defines what type of God. That is, a God to whom one may pray in expectation of receiving an answer. And by answer, I mean more than the subjective psychological effect of prayer. In other words, it's an answer to prayer that's not just simply in your head, but rather it's something that is tangible, something you can touch, or if you wish, something that's objective. And the other question was asked is whether they believed in the continuation of a person after death into another world. And the percentage of people agreeing and believing in both these statements is 40%. 40% of U.S. scientists believe God answers prayer, and 40% of U.S. scientists believe that there's life after death. In another paper published in a very important scientific journal, the journal Science, entitled Science and God, a warming trend. In other words, Greg Eastbrook is arguing that maybe today we're getting beyond the old dichotomy, this notion of science and religion in a warfare. And this paper is also cited on the back page of your handout. Greg Easterbrook says the following, the National Academy of Sciences and the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Folks, these are two of the most important scientific organizations in the world. What are they doing? They have launched projects to promote a dialogue between science and religion. New institutions aimed at bridging the gap have been formed. In fact, 